ideally, you shouldn't have to post your own content in social media. That there are so many people talking about you that you can merely share their content in place of having your own content. In other words, instead of talking about yourself all the time, promote those that are talking about you. And this is where, uh, you know, when I talk about influencer marketing, I'm not talking about just people with like millions of followers. I'm talking about anybody that has some influence in social media. These can be people that we call nano influencers that have as small as 1,000 followers. Hi, I'm Nishant Garg with What Market Wants. My guest for today is a social media marketing expert. He's a keynote speaker. He has his own podcast about social media and digital marketing. He's the author of the book, Maximize the Social and the Age of Influence. Let's welcome Neil Sheffer. Hi. Hey, Nishan. How's it going? It's good, man. So tell me, how did you get into social media marketing? What's the story behind it? Wow. Well, it's a long story, but... Uh... I like to say that social media is sort of an industry that found me. My background's B2B sales. And when I was actually looking for a job for the first time, uh, back in the day, I became a heavy user of LinkedIn because this was before you know, Facebook and Instagram. And I became such a heavy user that I began to contribute on forums and answer various questions in, in LinkedIn groups. And uh, after time, I began to be known as sort of this expert. So I, I launched a blog. And uh, a year later, I published my first book, which was on LinkedIn. And that led me to getting hired by, you know, uh, places to speak, but also by companies to help them in a consulting manner. And really, I, I started with LinkedIn, but from there, obviously, went on to, to Facebook, Instagram, and then all the other social networks that have evolved. So it happened quite organically, but um, it just shows you when you put yourself out there, whether it's through a podcast or YouTube or blogging or social media, that there's lots of opportunities to help and to serve people. I believe you work with a lot of Japanese companies. How did that happen? Well, I lived in Japan from, uh, well, I lived in Japan for 15 years. So I, I launched my career here and I speak fluent Japanese. So it's something that I've, uh, I've really focused on, um, you know, investing in relationships here and making sure I come back to continue to uh, invest. And I do have Japanese clients. So obviously I like to visit them here in Japan uh, as often as I can. So it's just a part of my business. It's it's sort of a, you know, a USP unique selling proposition that I'm fluent in the language. And, and there are Japanese companies throughout the world that I can help. So obviously I have many uh, Japanese clients in the United States, but also some that are just based in Japan uh, and I'm helping them with their international digital marketing. So according to you, how has social media evolved in the last decade? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> It's social media has completely uh, evolved and continues to evolve. I think from the average user, it may not seem that different, but you know, TikTok has only been around for a year and a half uh, or two years, and all of a sudden, it sort of you know changed our lives. Uh, it really transformed us. There are some older networks that are still around, like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, but they're also very different today than they were ten years ago. Um, I think the only real uh, common thread is that people are using social media more and more on a daily basis and the more people are using social media. So um, as we join social media, uh, we, we, we tend to change it. And, um, you know, if you looked at the original things people posted on Instagram and now what they post, or maybe the original things posted on TikTok when it was all about dances, but there's a lot of content that's unrelated to dances today. Um, and a lot of professionals that are now recording TikTok videos. So uh, it the only constant is change. It always changing, always evolving. So, what are the most common misconceptions around social media marketing, according to you? The most common misconceptions. Um, I think that people or businesses think that it's just really easy to go viral in in social media, and obviously that is very very difficult. <laughs> I think a lot of companies also have this misconception that just by buying Facebook ads, they're doing social media marketing when, although it, it is a paid social effort, you know, buying ads on Facebook is not really social media. It's paid media, right? If there's nothing organic about it. There's nothing about your business sort of, uh, you know, engaging with others. 
So I, I think that those are, you know, two of the big misconceptions. I think the third one is not directly related to social media marketing. It's indirect, but uh, just the whole idea about influencers and influencer marketing. And, uh, you know, my recent book, The Age of Influence, was all about this. And I think that um, businesses really misunderstand influencers and influencers, I believe, are the key to really getting word of mouth about your brand in social media because the algorithms work against brands, but they work for people and especially for influencers. So I'll go with those as my top three misconceptions about social media marketing. <laughs> okay. So there are so many businesses struggling to gain any kind of attention on social media. What do you think they're doing wrong? Um, I think that they're just having a one-way communication. They're just setting up shop. They create a profile and they're just publishing content after publishing content after publishing content. They're not going out and engaging with other people. They're not following other people. They're not liking other posts or commenting other posts. Uh, I think this is, you know, one of the biggest mistakes that most businesses make. They're they're not being social in social media, right? Um, <laughs> another one is they're not really, you know, creating community. Uh, businesses need to find their customers. They need to find their fans. Sometimes it takes reminding in your email newsletters on your website, uh, you know, uh, doing social listening, looking for when people mention your brand and really, you know, following, engaging and, and creating this sort of community that will help you build followers and really build friends in social media. That's another way to, to really get noticed. And the third way I, I mentioned it before really is leveraging influencers um, to get word of mouth about your brand going. And this is a unique way in which any business, I believe, can be heard through uh, reaching these various niche communities that influencers are able to reach, but it's very, very hard for businesses to. So those are my three um, three things I think businesses are doing, or, or three things I'd say businesses can do to uh, to be heard more in a very, very busy and noisy market of social media. So basically, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. That's something brands need to understand. Amen, brother. That's, that's exactly it. It's a two-way conversation, a two-way street. Yeah. So tell me. What are the main aspects to think about when you're designing your social media marketing strategy? Well, you know, you mentioned that book, Maximize Your Social. So that, that book is really about how to create your own social media marketing strategy. And there's obviously a lot that goes into it. There's the choice of social networks. There's the branding of your profile, including keywords, which are important for SEO. Um, there's your whole content strategy, which is going to be critical. There's an engagement strategy. There's obviously how do you supplement this with, it shouldn't be the main focus, but obviously using paid ads at the beginning to get your, your, you know, your presence known or to, to boost strategic content. Um, you know, that's part of it. You also need to have an influencer strategy. How are you going to engage uh, or um, build relationships with influencers? So I think that there's a lot of pieces that go into it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, social media is, is people and content and conversations. So you need to have content. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that businesses have that they need to be really strategic about is how are you going on a day in, day out basis, have something to talk about in social media. And this is where I love the idea of leveraging your community of customers and fans, as well as leveraging influencers that, that talk about your brand um, and really reuse user generated content um, to help you create a lot of content uh, that, that you're going to need in order to be social in social media. So what role does influencer marketing play in a brand's social media strategy? So I believe that uh, what I consult my companies, or I should say my customers are, that ideally you shouldn't have to post your own content in social media. That there are so many people talking about you that you can merely share their content in place of having your own content. In other words, instead of talking about yourself all the time, promote those that are talking about you. And this is where, uh, you know, when I talk about influencer marketing, I'm not talking about just people with like millions of followers. I'm talking about anybody that has some influence in social media. These can be people that we call nano influencers that have as small as 1,000 followers. And when we get to that nano influencer space, you might find that your customers, your followers, or your employees are already considered to be influencers based on that calculation. And if we can get them talking about us, then obviously it's going to have a bigger impact. You know, we can talk about ourselves as much as we want. Maybe we have a thousand followers. If we have 10 employees, customers, fans, 
and each of them have a thousand followers, we're already reaching 10 times more people by leveraging their communities and leveraging their profiles. So for me, in an ideal world, the social media uh, marketing strategy from an organic perspective would really be influencer engagement uh, among all these types of influencers that I talked about. Um, supplemented with some paid media, uh, I will accept that in order to reach certain objectives, you you will need to have paid. But from an organic perspective, I'd rather you let your fans do the talking. There's a number of, uh, especially on Instagram, a number of famous brands and all they post is content from their fans um, because their fans, you know, they create better content than, uh, you know, than what they do as the brand. So that's where I think the influencers really fit in. And I, I think social media is an amazing place to develop relationships. Um, you know, I, I talk about influencers in, in my book, The Age of Influence, and two different types of influencers. One are those that already have brand affinity. These are, you know, your customers, your employees, your followers, your partners, your distributors. They all already like, know, and trust your brand for, uh, you know, from a little to a lot. So I, I think you should primarily use these people. But if you're a startup, you don't have any customers, you don't have any followers. This is where you need to make new friends. You need to develop relationships with influencers. And there are many at the nano level that for free product, uh, especially if it really is something that interests them, they'll be more than happy to help spread the word for you. And there's a number of startups that this has been a very, very successful strategy for them that has empowered their social media. So instead of always thinking about what are we going to talk about, let's get others talking for us and, and now figure out what other content that other people have already published should we best publish on our page. That's so true. So could you give us names of brands that you think are doing it really well on social media? Wow, you know, there's so many companies out there that are that are doing well on social. Um, I'm going to mention one brand and I want to make sure I have the spelling right. Um, because this is actually someone that I uh, that's actually in my mastermind group. It is a brand. It, it's a startup, right? But I think this illustrates what is possible. There is a startup called Pashier. Okay. So Pashier, it's spelled P-A-S-S-C-H-I-E-R. They're a startup. They have a unique product. They created a bamboo handlebar for bicycles. And the reason they did bamboo is that, you know, when you ride on a bike, it's it's the handlebars where you feel the shock and you it gets really bumpy and it's not a good ride. When you use bamboo, it up it actually absorbs a lot of the bounces. And it makes for a very, very comfortable riding experience. And when they uh, when they created the bamboo handlebars, they also understood that there was this whole sustainability effort. That instead of using non-sustainable parts for bicycles, let's use sustainable parts. And bamboo is is considered sustainable. So they basically reached out to all those people that were really, really interested in bicycles, okay. found them in social media said, because you love bicycles so much, we know you're going to love these handlebars. We created them for you. It's going to make for a much comfortable ride. We'll send you a pair. Would you love to try them out? And if you like them, will you post about it in social media? And their marketing has pretty much been 100% influencer marketing through reaching out and and you know giving away product, but getting immense rewards for it. Uh, literally, people talk about Instagram, YouTube videos, and it's led to a number of very, very interesting business relationships as well as their business has expanded globally. So that's just one example of, you know, a, a snapshot, I think, of what is possible in social media when you, um, you know, when you provide value, when you find the right people that are influencers, you provide them value and you develop relationships. There's a lot that you can cover, a lot that you can accomplish. It's very interesting, actually. So could you give us names of brands that you think are not doing it well on social media? Yeah, I don't want to say anything bad about brands, but I think that um, as we look ahead into 2022, that the social media landscape is really geared towards video, short form video, um, or things like stories, Google Web Stories, or you know stories that we know about on Instagram or Facebook, or they call them idea pins on Pinterest. But I think that brands need to get much more creative with, if they want to create their own social media content, they need to get much more creative really, really quickly in order to remain relevant. Because on these newer platforms and these newer video formats, uh, it's very, very challenging for brands that were already challenged by visual networks like Instagram, right? Um, 
So I, I think in, in that aspect, there are very, very few brands that are doing, that are creating that type of content that I think they need to in order to be relevant in the future. It's even hard for normal people like you and me to create, you know, TikTok uh, videos and Instagram reels on a daily basis. But that I think is what's going to be required going forward. And, um, and therefore, you know, most brands really struggle with that. So I won't say that brands are failing, but it, it's a never ending struggle to, to remain relevant and to be heard. And I think with how popular these new formats are and with the social networks, knowing that, you know, everybody trying to compete with TikTok and adding that sort of functionality, it's just going to get more and more challenging for brands. So I know that's, that's not a direct response to your question, but um, <laughs> I think it's, it's, the, it's the right thing to say that it, it challenges uh, every brand out there today. So what's the next big social media platform according to you after Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Well, we already have TikTok, right? And I think that, you know, we, we've sort of played around with audio, social audio. We had Clubhouse come out and then Twitter spaces. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think that's going to be the next big thing. I think that was more of a product of this pandemic. Uh, I just got a notice from Facebook today that they added podcasts to their, uh, you can now add a, a podcast to your Facebook page. So I do think that I'm not so sure about social audio, but podcasting and YouTube are as strong as ever and will continue to grow stronger and stronger. Um, and all the other social networks are really looking at TikTok. So I don't see another new social network emerging. Um, but I think that the the audio through podcasts and the video through YouTube and everything else through TikTok, I think it's going to become very, very clear that, um, you know, all these networks are going to try to copy each other. And I, I think we're going to see, you know, uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, I, I, I think that, you know, we already saw Google, you know, create uh, YouTube shorts and now Google web stories. That's sort of how they are trying to fight it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Facebook and Instagram do. And I think Twitter, I feel really bad for because I love Twitter, but I think Twitter is, is, it's really hard for them to remain relevant. I don't think they're going to disappear, but I think that they are being challenged as well. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to be bought out by another company or not, but I think they're, they're the ones that are, of, of all the networks I mentioned, they're the ones that are in most danger, I think, um, unless they can really, you know, do something new and innovative. Um, otherwise, I think that their their growth is going to continue to be stagnant uh, over time. So according to you, what's the future of social media in a world where people are concerned about their privacy and there are so many regulations coming up around data protection? You know, I, I look at my my kids who are 16 and 14, and I think that we've gone through an evolution where when Facebook just came out and in the early days of Instagram, people just were sharing everything. And I think this newer generation, Gen Z, is a little bit smarter. They're creating multiple Instagram profiles. They're taking conversations on a Discord. What is meant for public display is meant for public display. What's not meant for that? They're doing it through private channels. Like I said, private Instagram channels or just through direct messages or using group message chats like WhatsApp or in Japan, we have an app called Line uh, which and, or WeChat in China. So I think that people are getting smarter and um, you know they, they do have privacy concerns, but they're also getting more intelligent in how they're using social media to help maintain their privacy when necessary. And I think that's a hallmark of Gen Z that's very, very different than previous generations. You don't know how many people I know when they were in their mid twenties and they were looking for a new job, they deleted their Facebook because they were so embarrassed by how much information about them was out there. Um, I think with new generations, they understand that there is no privacy once that information is out there in social media, and 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 thus they're just being a lot more selective because there's you know I can see there being more laws, but at the end of the day, it's up to us to decide what information we want to make public, what information we want to make private. So I think that people are adjusting pretty quickly um, to that challenge. That's a very interesting take on the topic. So tell me, who do you look up to in your industry? Wow. Um, there's a number of people that I look up to. I mean, there, there are some extremely, uh, you know, intelligent authors, speakers, practitioners, uh, too many to name. And I, I, I feel if I name some and I left out others that they're going to get mad at me. <laughs> um, I think one person that from a, you know, I'll, I'll go sort of in order um, podcasting. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Pat Flynn. Um, I think he's, he's amazing, shares incredible information and he's 
really trying to create his own little podcasting empire uh, by investing in a few podcasts. But, you know, uh, Pat Flynn, John Lee Dumas, um, incredible guy as well. Those two I, I most look up to when it comes to podcasting. Um, YouTube videos, I mean, and I'd say blogging Neil Patel. Neil is, is, is incredible, um, down to earth, but extremely intelligent and, and just shares an incredible amount uh, of information. Um, I'm going to start with those three. Uh, there, there's a lot of other people. I'll, I'll throw out Ann Hanley for content marketing um, and Joe Polizzi uh, as well. Those two are like the grand – I don't want to call them grandfather and grandmother or godfather, godmother, <laughs> but um, they're the two most influential voices. But they're also two incredibly down-to-earth and, and two of the nicest people that you'll ever meet. Um, so there's – there's uh, five people for you. <laughs> wow, superb. So what are your favorite branding and marketing books? Well, um, man, there's been a lot of books that have come out. I do an annual, well, not an annual review, but I have a, I have a blog post where, where I review a lot of them. Um, well, I mean, you know, Seth Godin is still, um, you know, I think about like Pur- Purple Cow and, um, and, and lots of books he's written. Um, they're really classic books. Um, and I think, you know, from an influencer marketing perspective, the book Influence by uh, Dr. Cialdini is also just uh, an incredible book that is still, I, I think that the, the, the books that we still talk about today, even though they were published like more than five or 10 years ago, um, really show that they are, uh, they are the standards. Um, you know, I, I then look at books like Inbound Marketing really, I think, was the first book that started this whole uh, movement into you know, content marketing and leveraging social media for web traffic. So that's still sort of one of the classics. Brian Solis has written a number of classic books on, I mean, he has a PR background, but he's he's really gone into a lot of different uh, fields, including, you know, customer experience, customer design. So those are a, a few of the books. And then Jay Bear, um, Utility, uh, Hug Your Haters. He's written a number of, of books that I think anyone can learn a lot about marketing and branding from. I love most of the books you've mentioned. So tell me, what inspired you to write your books, Maximize the Social and the Age of Influence? Yeah, so, you know, for me, it's simple. Um, I write books to help people solve problems. I write books to serve my audience. And, um, you know, my first two books were about LinkedIn. My, my first book really was this organic effort to just share everything that I knew and to virtually network uh, 24-7, 365 days a year through through my book, through my information. Uh, and to make more friends over LinkedIn. Uh, my second book, Maximizing LinkedIn for Sales and Social Media Marketing, was after I had begun doing my social media marketing strategy consulting, I realized that my first book, Windmill Networking, wasn't a business book. So I wanted to write a business book. I had a few ideas, but LinkedIn, since I knew it the best, I, I figured if I was going to write a business book, I'd start with LinkedIn. Uh, a few years later, I wrote Maximize Your Social. It really detailed all my work about how to create a social media marketing strategy. And once again, it was to serve my audience of, of you know, I, I can't, I can't, you know, not everybody can hire me. So if you can't hire me, at least read my book and, and, you know, do social media marketing, right. Um, fast forward several years later, I found that there's an incredible amount of misinformation about influencers and influencer marketing. And I also think out of everything out there, it is the most untapped thing that every company can and should leverage. So I sort of wanted to once again, educate my audience uh, my community and really let them know about uh, just a different mindset, a different way of thinking about social media marketing and about influencers and help them tap into that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm often inspired by, you know, questions I get, actual business situations. Um, and uh, I, I feel, you know, I, I feel passionate about trying to deliver that content in an evergreen, long lasting format, which, which for me is a book. Uh, it becomes a big business card. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm working on my fifth book as we speak. Oh. So, uh, once again, driven by customer problems. And, and when I have uh, what I believe to be unique insight that no one else is talking about on the Internet, that, that's another, you know, thing that inspires me to write the book. That this is so different than what people are talking about. I, I need to create something substantial um, and get it out there. So that was really with, with Maximize Your Social, The Age of Influence, that was the common thread. And I think for the next book, it will be uh, the common thread as well. Could you give us some exclusive info about your upcoming book? Yeah. So I have a free preview of it that I've been wanting to publish for, wanting to allow everybody to download for free for a little while. I, I need to do a final proofread. I've been 
severely delayed uh, by a quarter. So I'm hoping that uh, in the next week or two that I will get it out. Um, but it's really about looking at, you know, to, to go back into why I'm writing this one, Nishant, you know, a lot of people after I wrote The Age of Influence, a lot of brands reached out to me. We want help with our influencer marketing. But when I dug deep into what they were doing, I realized that they were missing a lot of components of a modern digital marketing infrastructure. And by the way, I published The Age of Influence in March of last year, right when the lockdowns all started to happen, when digital marketing is just more and more important. So I realized that, you know, what is old is actually very new and sexy, right? While everybody looks at, you know, TikTok and, and Instagram Reels, I look at search engine optimization. I look at email marketing and marketing automation. And every company needs to be doing all these things. Um, but most companies weren't, or they, you know, they did it many years ago and they forgot about it now. So I realized that there's a need to write a modern digital marketing playbook for this post-pandemic economy, for the fact that we are digital first today. Um, so yeah, so that that is the book. And it it really just as maximize your social talked about all my experiences doing social media marketing strategy consulting. This book is really going to focus on all the consulting, the marketing consulting I've done since the pandemic started um, and what I've seen in the ways I've helped businesses, but really put it in a playbook format similar to Maximize Your Social so that any business can can read it and, and implement it and hopefully be successful with their digital marketing. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. And uh, you know, I'll definitely let you know once that free preview is out. Wow, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot for your time and insights, Neil. It's been my pleasure. If you found this interesting, you must check out his books. You'll find the links in the description. To get more such great insights from the world of business, branding and marketing, subscribe to What Market Wants, share this with someone you want to help and let me help you unlock your market potential. Cheers!